I'm going to go through all of the don'ts for drawing hair and then I'm going to go through all of the do's and I'll take you through a full hair study. So let's get started. The first don't is you don't want to create a really dark sketch outline. So when you're drawing in all of the different sections of the hair and blocking in your sketch, you don't want to do it too dark because if you do really dark outlines and they show through your hair study, then this will make your hair study look really flat and it will give it more of a cartoony look. And because we want to have a realistic style with our hair, we don't want it to look flat or cartoony at all. So try Try to avoid doing a really dark sketch outline. Another don't is you don't want to automatically add pencil strokes all over each section of the hair. So when you're going through and starting to shade in the hair study, you don't need to shade in every part of the hair. It is really important that you look at your reference and look out for any highlights in the hair so that you can preserve them. These highlighted areas, you won't necessarily go and add a lot of shading to. So it's important that before you do your shading process, you look for these areas so that you know not to go over them. Now let's go on to the third don't and that is you don't want to create really straight lines when you're doing your hair studies because even if you're drawing a straight hairstyle there'll be some sort of curve to the strands of hairs. The hairs aren't just dead straight and if you do the hairs really straight then again it will make your drawing flat because the hair will lack a lot of volume. So make sure that you add some sort of curve to the hair, really look in the reference at the direction that hair is curving in because no matter how straight the hair is going to be, the hair is going to be going around some sort of form, whether that's going around the shape of the face, for example. Another don't is you don't want to shade in the hair and you also don't want to draw the hair in a back and forth motion. So when we're drawing areas like the skin, we may just want to shade in the whole area by going in circular motions, for example, or by going back and forth, but very lightly. But when we're drawing hair, we don't want to just do back and forth shading. We want to build up the hair in layers. We need to have a nice hair texture. So we need to build it up in layers by building up lines with our pencils. And I'll be talking more about how I do that when I go through the do hair study. So another thing is that you don't want to miss out on adding in darker values. You really need to make sure that you get in all of the shadows that you can see in the reference so that the hair study really stands out. Otherwise, the hair will lack a lot of depth. And I think this is a very common beginner mistake is to not go in with those darker pencils and add that extra layer to really get the shadows as dark as they need to be. And it's just as important to get the shadows as dark as they need to be as it is to preserve the highlights. So make sure that you identify where the darkest sections of the hair are and where the shadows are in the hair and make sure that you replicate that in your hair study. The next don't is you don't want to make the hair look too uniformed. It's okay to go in and add in loose individual hairs. No one's hair is naturally perfectly slicked down. There will be a few rogue flyaway hairs especially where it's surrounding the hair, so where the hair's going onto the background and just loosely around each section of hair. So make sure you go in and add some loose hairs as it will make the hair look more natural and it'll make it therefore look more realistic. Also, if you do draw in flyaway hairs, make sure you don't do them really short and spiky. I've noticed a lot of people do this, but you wanna make sure that when you're drawing in flyaway hairs, that you are doing those hairs the exact same length as all of the other hairs for that hair study. Don't do the flyaway hairs really, really short or spiky. Otherwise, again, it won't look very natural. And the final don't is don't leave your hair sketch looking grainy as this will really detract from the realism. So if you need to go in with a blending tool like a paintbrush and just smooth over that sketch so that it doesn't look really, really grainy as hair texture hasn't got any graininess to it. So the first one is make sure that you keep your sketch as light as you can while still being able to see it. Also, don't worry about adding in lots of detail to your sketch. Just sketch in the basic shapes of the main sections of hair. You don't need to worry about adding any detail to your sketch. Also, make sure you identify any highlights, like I said, in the hair before you go in and start to build up your layers of shading. Therefore, you'll know where you need to keep light and which areas you need to try and preserve. So always analyze the reference, look at where the highlights and the shadows are so that you know how you're going to approach your drawing. 
The third do is to make sure that your pencil lines are going with the direction of each section of hair. And this is such a big and important tip. This is what's going to make your hair look really realistic, is following the direction that each section of hair is going in. And work on the hair study in sections. Don't try and do it all in one go, otherwise you may be tempted to rush through it. So just focus on each section at a time. And not all hair sections will be going in the same direction, especially if you're drawing something like an updo, where the hair might be going in different directions, or if you're drawing curly hair. So make sure you look at the reference to determine which direction that section of hair is going in. Moving on to the next do, and that is to make sure that your transitions from the darker areas of the hair, so where the hair is shadowed, to where the lighter areas are, make sure that those transitions are very gradual. You can do this by staggering where you stop each pencil stroke as you approach a highlighted area. The natural transitions between the midtones and highlights will stop your drawing from looking like a cartoon study. Because if you think about cartoon hair, they have got very harsh transitions between the highlights, so the glossy highlights, and then the midtone areas. It's a very clean cutoff point. Whereas if you want to make the hair look more realistic, you have to have more natural transitions. And that's pretty common no matter what you're drawing. If you want something to look realistic, have softer transitions. The next do is to build up the hair using layers of shading. You'll wanna start with a base layer and establish where the shadows and highlights are and also the direction each section of hair is going in. This first layer will then be blended out and I like to use a paintbrush to do this and this will remove any graininess which could hinder your drawing from looking realistic. And then you'll want to do the blending stage and this will help to also tone the highlighted areas. And like I said, it will get rid of any graininess. Once you've got that base layer established, you can go in with your pencils and build up more detail. So I like to go in and add in the flyaway hairs at this stage and just build up more detail because if you wanna build up a realistic hair texture, like I said, you need to add layers. So always build up more layers and this is the stage where you also can go in and build up any more shadows if you haven't got the darkest areas of the hair study quite dark enough yet. Then what I love doing with my hair studies is I'll use a stick eraser and this will further add contrast to the drawing by pulling up those highlights, but it's also a great tool for adding realistic hair texture because you can go in, add detail with the eraser and also pull up some flyaway hairs as well. So I love using a stick eraser when I am drawing realistic hair. The final do is to make sure you add lots of flyaway hairs. This is what really gives the hair a natural look and it really makes all of the difference. Make sure, like I said, the hairs that you're drawing in are the same length as the other hairs for the hair study. Don't draw them really short. And I like to add a variation in the values of my flyaway hairs. So I'll make some slightly darker and then others really light. And this will help to add even more depth to the study. So those are my do's and don'ts for drawing hair. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to do a more up-to-date one where I could show two camera angles and therefore the video quality was a little better and I also wanted to show more real-time clips in this one. Let me know in the comments section below what other tutorials, especially do's and don'ts tutorials, you'd like to see me make in the future. But thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.